Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Monte Sahaja. And uh, also, welcome to all of you who are joining us via broadcasting uh, wherever you are around the world, so you can enjoy Satsang with us in real time here in Portugal. So, big welcome for everyone. Very good. And, uh, okay, please come. Mm. Beloved Master, thank you, thank you for bringing me here. I'd just like to um, acknowledge my meeting with you again and my first time in Monte Sahaja mm -hmm. and to get your blessing because I'll be here till after Zimar. I'll be in the Bhavan. Okay. I'd just like to thank you for that. and I know you brought me here. And I'm very, very grateful. Very good. Okay. Thank you. You? Yeah. Mm. How many people here are totally new to Satsang? Do you have any idea <laughs> what you are doing here? Hello, yeah. would you? Hello. I have been uh, here several times and in at in Sima, at Simar too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like uh, when I'm here, I have no questions for for you. But today I I have come because um, even I know it's not real. There is something that it's uh, uh, giving me a lot of suffering. I'm I'm trying to to be a mother uh, like five years ago, and I have uh, lost my pregnancy five times. Um, that is giving me a lot of suffering. Um, when, when, I am, uh, when I am in the middle of that, of that suffering, of that crying, I remember you saying, it's nothing, it's nothing, everything you hear is nothing, all those thoughts. And in, the, in that moment, I, I feel relief and, and suffer, suffering stop. But um, the, the next minute uh, is, is, is again and again and again. And it's like I'm at the middle of this, and I cannot. Uh, I don't have any any solution. Okay. And you know, you say you suffering. Yeah? The word suffering. And um, uh, what are you suffering? Give us uh, some uh, sense. What is the suffering uh, particularly about? Can you have you identified that? You say in terms of suffering, you've been trying to have a child for some time, and it has been unsuccessful, or you've uh, or you've lost. Yeah, I, I lost. You lost, no? And um, and at at what stage you lose? Early stage. Early or? stage. Early really stage. early okay. stage. And uh, anyhow, there, there's a great sense of suffering. What what, what are you suffering from? I suppose I have been. Since I'm like 14, 15 years, um, like uh, I, I always said, uh, I want to be a mother. I want to have a family. I want to have a partner, and and mm. I, I realized when when this uh, wasn't I, I can find the word at the beginning when I uh, begin with problems and things I said okay be mother is not an objective it's like something that life has to to give to you okay. I have all that in my mind but anyway I just want to have What do a you family. feel you feel you failed Yeah
which means what? You failed. You didn't. You you're you're not until now, until until now you've not been able to um, to take the child to have the child. So you it's not possible. It's not possible. It hasn't been possible so far. But why you fail? What it mean? It becomes very personal. Hmm? Like the life is saying, you are not good enough to be mother. What is the message? What is causing the pain so much? Hmm? It's, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm frightened that that life is is giving me that message that you don't. It's not for you or something like that. And I try to understand every time I have that that experience again. I lost the baby. It's like, hey, Raquel, life is is telling you something. Yes, maybe it could be that uh, it has become too important for you. That maybe something, maybe your life could be for something greater. Could there be something greater even? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Could there not be? You, you it's a tremendous importance. Hmm? It, it sometimes happens like that. The thing, the people, they want something so bad they can't have it. And other people, they don't care about it, then they have ten, fifteen of them. <laughs> but you want just one, just give me one, one. And still it doesn't happen. And it feels then, oh, life is so hard, why is life is so cruel and so on. But if your mind is so fixed, you know, so fixed on having something, whatever it may be, it could be to have a relationship, to have a partner, to uh, own a Lamborghini or something, or to whatever it is, whatever the mind is fixed so strong on this, and uh, then it exaggerates the significance and the importance of that, you know. And we all feel that we should be entitled to what we desire. You know, I only want this. I don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to have a relationship, and it's not coming in that way. Then also you can reflect a little bit, also, not just remorsefully, but really, you know. Perhaps I can use this time to to go more deeply into to really what 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 is this life that I seem to have? What is it? What is the purpose of it? You know, is it to come here and to be a mother and to bring up some children and uh, and you know, and that's it. That's all life wants from me. Maybe, uh, maybe you you could find what is the highest. If a being appeared to you and said, "I would like to offer you to fulfil your highest wish." The highest wish that you can think of. Hmm? Would you need some time to think about it, or do you know immediately? The highest what? The highest desire, the highest wish that you could have in life for you, your life. Suppose one being came to you and and uh, you know says, "Look, I am from the heaven, you know, and I hear you. I hear you. I've come to to fulfil your highest wish." What is it? What is your highest desire, your deepest desire, your highest wish? And do you need some time to think about it, or do you have already? Do you know already? No. Yeah. I think I just want to to feel peace, to feel pleno. I don't know the word in English. Yeah. Like you you, feel, you want to be at peace. Yeah. You want to feel peace. To feel uh, peace in my life. That that usually is like that. I I have. I'm, I'm very lucky with everything in my life. You, you what? Lucky. Yeah, very lucky. lucky. I have a, a great partner. I have a spiritual uh, feeling. Uh, even last year, I I had a, a gift of experience, the absolute, the words that you said. I had experience at home alone, and I, and I really experienced uh, what we really are. Mm. I know all, all that, but it's meant to stay. It Which, is not meant the the, the 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 realization of who you are yeah. should not just be a flash, an experience you have and it passes away. It should so if how was it when it came to you? Was it how was it uh, was it greater than the idea of being a mum? 
was in the middle of that. <laughs> it was in the middle of, of what? <laughs> I, was a, I was a night at home and, and suddenly I had a, a wonderful experience for a few hours. Yes. And I, now, ne next morning when I was watching your videos, I, I knew I could understand exactly what, what you were saying. It yes. was, I didn't have to believe you. Yes. But, and every time I, cl when I'm at the middle of that suffering, I close my eyes and I can come back there because I don't, I know I never left there. But mm, I don't know, I, I don't know if I have to do all the time that exercise. Just close my eyes, breathe, and come to the present moment and everything vanish. I know it's like that. Yes. But it's like I have to do it all the time, all the time, all the time. But if it brings such great joy, does it feel like work? If, if you have to just to leave everything for a moment and come back, just come back to here. And then when you are here again with your attention and your being, yeah. you are what? Tell me what has happened. No, absolutely peace. I'm, I'm, absolutely I'm perfect. Peace. Yes, yes. I'm perfect. So is it worth it or not to bring the attention back? Yeah. yeah. And if you discover something, you cannot buy it anywhere. Even if you are a billionaire, you cannot go and buy this, this experience. You, you found it, no? And do you want it to leave? Do you want this, that, this experience to go away? No. No. So, why it seemed to go away? Because I suppose it's because my attention, my attention uh, goes out again. Where you prefer to stay? Here. So it's it's just I had to do that uh, exercise for calling. No, it's not. The exercise is secondary. You started. It reveals something to you. It's not just the exercise. The exercise just reveals something to you. And it re it's so powerful, it's so beautiful. It reveals something to you. And then in that moment, most people would say, I, I don't want to ever lose this. I want to be one with this. I want to stay here. And then you say, I ask you, well, how did it go away? You say, well, my attention go out. Hmm? But I want to point out that even if your attention go out, no, there is something that doesn't go out. It is even aware that the attention goes out. But it and the attention are not the same thing. It is aware the attention go out. But it is here. Right there in the place of peace, it is right there. If you pay attention only to that, then the attention that goes out will not be troublesome. Itself it will come back to be here with peace. And sometimes when we the mind say, Oh, you know, if you chose peace, if you choose to be there in your heart, you will never be a mother. Yeah. Buddhas don't have babies. <laughs> It will say all kinds of things like that, and then you remember, oh, but I want so much to be a mother. So, be careful how your mind, because even the desire to have a child or to have anything in this world, you know, it is so powerful when you feel you want something that you don't have it. If it's so powerful, so powerful, and when you have it, what's next? Yeah. What What's next? No? What's next? <laughs> Second baby, maybe <laughs> I don't know, but something plays like that, and uh, that's the way that fantasies, desires work. You feel, ah, if, if I only have this, then you know it will fulfill my fantasies. I will have everything I want, it will be complete. But it is never complete. Always something more you will want. That's the nature of desire itself, you know? 
but also life is desire also to some extent you know we always aspire for something and whatever however if your answer is correct that really that peace is really to feel peace with yourself yes. and happiness solid no mm-hmm. that you put that would you say again you put that higher than being a mother same as or a little bit less than being mother it's not a competition by the way i'm just saying to you. <laughs> where would you put it it is more important that that peace inside is is it's, is bigger it's, it's bigger. bigger yes because suppose you are an unpeaceful mother Yeah, the baby was not peaceful. So even the baby also want to enjoy some peace also with you. <laughs> hmm? But mother is not peaceful, but mother is mother. So peace is going to win. If you are an intelligent being, then you, you will see, yes, I must be at peace, you know, with or without. And I'm not making any conclusion because life maybe just everything relax. When you relax from all of this and begin to really put some energy. On, on really discovering if this can be permanent. You see? I don't know how to do that. How well, to, to feel that, that permanent feeling. Well, you came here for that, no? Mm, you came here for that. Uh, it itself, in itself, it must be permanent. But to yourself, who feel like it's something you have to do, it seems like it come and go. It seemed like it come and go. So we have been also doing some form of exercise. You know, we call it exercise. I call it invitation, like that. And if I were to spread this um, openly for everybody, and I said, you know, if it were, if you you're all here, if it was presented to you, every single person here, that it was possible today. To discover, to come to a discovery of your true nature, who you really are, not not what you have been conditioned to believe you are, but actually to experience the truth of yourself. No? Not a story, but the essence, the spirit of yourself. Would you be open for this? Yes. Somebody's missing. <laughs> Would you be open for that? Yes. Yeah. Still, some people listen. It's okay. It's okay because you don't have to say yes. You don't have to say yes. But I would take it that, uh, and it's a good question for me to ask because you have come here, and there's nothing else going on here <laughs> apart from the. urge to discover this and not only to discover it as a passing experience but to discover that as your stable experience that is your own self that is the main focus for anybody coming to Montessaja from my way of looking at it maybe people have another motive I don't know but this is what is offered here so then I ask you, will you be open for it? You say, yes, yes, you'll be open for it. Hmm. So now I have to respond and I say, OK, well, let's see what happened then. And uh, so I am going to present this invitation to you. If you want, you can stand or you can sit down again because it's for everybody, including yourself, what you want to do. What do you want me to do? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I just want to give you a hug and then sit if you want. Okay, come, come. Let me <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wonderful.
So I take it that you came and you say, hmm, you have approached and you say that, uh, yes, I have come here today because uh, I have heard or I have watched your video and you speak about the possibility of waking up to the Truth. And why should you not want to wake up? You wake up meaning to, to be free from uh, all my misconceptions about myself and about life, to be free from fear of death, a fear also of life, because people have fear of life also. I want to discover my true nature. I am tired of this, my mind in this, this person, personalities. and I, I, It is not working out for me. Is it possible? No, I am going to take you to the invitation now, and uh, I would like to discover this. I want to, you are saying this to me. And I say, OK. And I have heard you are saying, I have heard that you, it is possible that you could guide me, and I may discover that today. Is it possible? I said, let us see what happened. I am here in this space. In this space of isness, of just life, existence. And you are welcome to come in. If this is what you say you want, if it is true, you can come inside. But before you do, just like we are sitting here before you came in this room, you left your shoes outside. I say, please leave your shoes outside. And also, I said, please leave your mind outside. OK? Suppose I said like that. You say, oh my God, how to leave my mind outside? I've been trying to do this anyway. How, how I can leave my mind outside? Shoes is easy, but how I can leave my mind outside? And I say, well, it's not a big deal. Please listen. I only mean when you're here with me, let's not talk about your past, about your memories and what you've done before. It's not going to help if all you want to discover is the Truth. I uh, don't want to speak about your person. OK? Would that be OK for a moment? Yes. yes. And I'm going to ask you for some feedback at some point. If I say, so we're not going to speak about the past, and uh, it's OK, and also about the future. I mean, let's not talk about future like, you know, how you'd like to see the world in the future, or what kind of person you would like to be, we are not going to talk about that. It is not important if what you are searching for is your own Truth, is the Self. So we agree? Yeah. Past, future, we are not going to talk about it right now. And about the present even, just leave it. Do not put anything in it. Keep it just empty. Yeah? And also, I am not going to invite you to imagine anything. Do not use your imagination, no visualization. Just come as you are. Be empty of past and future and talk about the present and about yourself. Would you can you accept this? Yeah. Just for the short time that we are going to spend now. Okay? And then so I say, leave all these things outside, and I promise you. I guarantee that when we are finished, if you want them back, they will be right where you left them, waiting for you. OK? Because nobody wants them, OK? <laughs> Including myself, I don't want. So we leave your things there. Please come in. Be in here. Just enter the field of uh, this presence, this space. OK, so you are here. Then I ask you also, hmm, sometimes the mind wants to know, OK, I have left about the past, I am not going to talk about future or present. So OK, now what? What is next? And if I were to say to you, there is no next. I don't have a next thing to do. Just for now, just be empty. 
just be empty of thoughts, feelings. Like if they come, notice that they are just like clouds passing in the infinite sky. Don't get sticky with any thought or any emotion or memory. Just let them flow by. Just be totally empty of that. So that should be a relief also. I'm not going to ask you to do any spiritual gymnastics and to do anything incredible. Just as you are, just be empty. Empty, empty about thoughts, memories, sensation, desire, attachments. And even the desire for liberation now, I'm going to say, even that, I'm going to say, don't, let's not even talk about it. Just be empty. Just be empty now. Is good? And not waiting. No waiting. Just as you are now. Just be empty. You are not shopping for some experience. You are just, right now, you are simply here. All your stories, histories, everything is suspended now. You are not holding on to anything. Your pockets are empty. You are without content, without history. Just notice the environment of yourself, how you are, just this moment. There is only the sense that you are here, I am here, and that you are perceiving in this isness, this space of being. So I have to ask you to cooperate with me to come to this place and to just to be empty and present, just empty and present. No past, no future, no present, no memories, no desires, no attachment. Just spacious, empty, not waiting, just noticing. So I want to ask you just about this, just here and just about this. Is there anything personal? In this? No, it's not personal. That which is, this isness, I won't give it another name right now, just the isness of being. Can it be grasped by the senses? Each question I ask you, you listen inside. I'm going to be slow, so you can hear me, what I'm speaking, what I'm asking, and you answer from your heart. Does it have any size, this space, this, this beingness or whatever? Does it have shape at the back over here? Does it have any shape? No, no, no. Can it be confused? Does it judge anything? No. Can it be impressed? Can it be controlled? Did it, did it come from somewhere? Did it arrive from somewhere? 
just just stay as you are, just stay as you are, you know. This, this, experiencing, perceiving, being, can it go away? Can it leave? No. Can it be caught or photographed or something? No, it cannot. So it has no size, has no shape. Cannot be confused. It didn't come, and it cannot go. Hmm. Does it belong to any particular religion or philosophical thinking? No, no, no. Is it itself a teaching? Can it be sick? Does it have gender like male or female? No. How old is it? Age, age less? Was it born? Are you with me? Yes. Here is a good one now then. Can it die? And you are sure you are not imagining all this? So let me recap. It, 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 it has no size, it, it has no shape, it cannot be confused or angry, it does not judge, it cannot be manipulated, it cannot be photographed, it is not perceived through or by the senses, it cannot come, it cannot go. It was not born. It cannot die. How far from you is it? How much distance between yourself and it? Huh? No dis no distance. So if it is no distance, it must be the same as you. And we can only say, this must be yourself. Because not one person said, hang on a second, I need to think about it. Or if I said, is it white or grey? You said, no, no, it's more like it's pink. Nobody said. Like with one voice, you seem to be confirming something without the need to think about it. And that is very rare. Hmm? There are so many beings here from Different countries, different ages, no?
the questions that were asked to you, were you answering from opinions? From your mind? No. So therefore it's coming only from your heart. Do you have the sense that you have been hypnotized or something? So, to all the questions that I've put to you today so far, you have answered with one voice. Would you object to a kind of conclusion that if it is the same, the same in the same space as you? no distance, no difference, then it must be your own Self that you are speaking about, that was not born. This body was born. How can you know something was not born, unless you are there? That it cannot die, it cannot go away. It is ageless. What is the implication, then, of such a discovery, if this is true? <coughs> then who is that other guy, <laughs> who has all the troubles of the world? Who finds life so difficult and I only want to be a mother. I only want to be father. I don't ask for much. Who is it then who is speaking? No, I don't want you to put your hand up just yet. I want you just to reflect a bit. Because if this is true, what you have said, if this is true then I want you, can I call upon you, to stand with what you have seen? Yes. Can, you, can you stand with what you have said? Can you accept it? Can you accept it? Yes. Then if it is true, What does it mean? What is your life? Who is saying, uh, you know, I want to, I want to do this, and I can't find it that I don't like? And uh, is it the isness? Is this the? Is it the isness, or something else? Maybe who we have been living as so far is only an idea we have about who we are. Maybe it is only a mask being worn by something that otherwise cannot be seen without the mask, but still completely is. Unchanging, undying, unborn, without problems, without fear, without desire, not depending on something else, not personal. What size is it? Infinite. Infinite size. 
who is looking out from behind those eyes? Who is looking out? Who is behind those eyes looking out? Where did the looking begin? Isn't it like looking out from this vastness hmm, that has been conditioned to identify itself as a person? A limitation. The personhood state perhaps was meant to be more superficial, more playful. But forgetting, seemingly forgetting our natural state, what we have just been looking into, we have accepted a lesser state, a limited state, as our own self. Does my word feel abstract to you? And of course, seeing from this place of isness, does it want anything? What is past for it? What is future for it? Please reflect. Your recognition of this, will that also be passing? And who is recognizing it? Something different from it? But uh, perhaps due to the habit, a long habit, or perhaps even a dream, that we are this body, which is innocent actually, and is very necessary and important in the functioning of experiencing. It's even important to taste liberation, this body also. But is it the body? Is it the mind? Because both body and the functioning of mind and senses, everything is perceived in it and by it. Can we see this or not? Yes. yes. Whatever it is that appears or arises within it, can it affect it? Can it damage it? Can it hold it hostage? Please experience this and confirm your seeing. Digest your seeing. Because soon you are going to if not already, be meeting up with a force within you that doesn't want to know this. It doesn't want to cooperate in this. It wants to run away. But even if it should run away, it cannot run away to some place where this is not. Can you see this? Yes. Look in any direction. Can you come to the end of this? Even imagine you came to the end. Now, beyond the end, are you not there? Is this too much for you? 
Is it too much for you? Within us, there always seems to be a dimension in which things are happening. And yet, at the same time, there is a space in which nothing is happening. A space where seeming happenings are observed, but in the heart of it, there is a silence and a stillness. It is not a happening. Are you aware of this? You will become even more aware of this, hmm? because of the recognition of this isness today. The more you reflect upon it, the more magnificent it is going to be. Even if you say, I don't understand, who is it who is saying, I don't understand? Is it the isness? It is only the voice of your self image. Everything is coming and going. Everything. Everything is passing. Like time, everything is passing. Is the what is passing? Anybody going to sleep yet? Everything is passing. Every thought, every feeling, every idea, every image is a movement in time and space. And is observed to be passing. Everything is passing except your own self, which I refer to as the what is, the freedom. It doesn't call itself freedom, it doesn't call itself what is. It is not necessary. It is so pure, it doesn't say it is or it is not. It simply is. Let's just take a moment just to be in the space of what you have heard and what you are seeing. Don't give it to your mind. Because you exist, you can know this. Is the what is waiting for next? Now a power within you can start to play. The mind is coming. Yes, but you can't live like that. What are you going to do with this? Who is it speaking to? 
who would it be speaking to if your mind came and say, ha ah, well, that's all great, but now what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with what is? Who is it speaking to? Is it speaking to the what is? It can only be speaking to some kind of identity that you are holding on to. But if you can see that the identity itself is a passing cloud, in the present, in the presence of the isness. But don't underestimate habit. Habit is going to come. It's going to remind you who you think you are. Hmm? Look how much troubles you have. What makes you think you can get this? Huh? Do you deserve it? All these things he might say. And in the past, his voice has affected you, or affected who you thought you were. But listen again now, from the place of the isness. Who would such a voice be speaking to? Is it not to the present idea you have about yourself? And have you not had many different ideas about yourself? <laughs> is the what is a new idea of yourself? Can I ask? Yes. As this, what I call the what is, as it has it been diminishing since we've been talking about it? Is it disappointed? Can it leave? Even if you say, I want you to leave, I don't want you. What is? I don't want you. Can it leave? And who would you be to be saying, I don't want you? Is this anything other than another voice from the mind also? But we have been very familiar with this voice from the mind. We have a relationship with it. It tells you what you should like, what you should not like. It has endless opinions about you. And mostly, they are believed to be true. And remember that belief is one of your most intimate powers. When you believe in something, you believe it into existence, and it becomes your experience. If the mind does not get your belief, he has no power. Do you follow? If he gets your belief, you empower him. And in, in turn, he appears to overpower you. Who are you? Who are you? Are you merely that which is changing? Or are you the unchanging? Or both? We have a dynamic aspect. We have a sense of life of growth and change, of coming and going. We know this life. And yet, at the same time, the life that we think we are is very visible 
at a deeper level to some something, a pure awareness. Hmm? causes the perceiving of the dynamic life to happen also. Can you feel it in you? Can you feel where my words are speaking? Hmm? Who receives them? They are not asking you to change. They are pointing you to the unchanging in you. The changing we know pretty well. But do you know the unchanging? Something inside us seem to have given tremendous energy to, to blind you to the unchanging. Because the instant that you recognise the unchanging, you are free. When you recognise that the unchanging and yourself are one, then you may enjoy the changeful without fear. I wonder if you see this. It is important, because if you have heard and seen what I am pointing to, then in this instant, it is like you are reborn into an innocence, a purity. Hmm? And it might feel like, what, what to do now? Well, my answer would be, stay as the what is, and observe that life takes care of life. Observe, because something is itching to do. Observe that, but don't identify with anything. There is a habit, a reflex, to identify with the images and the movements that occur through the mind. But it is possible to simply observe without identifying, or without being swept up into the noise of the mind. All liberated beings know what I am speaking. They are that power themselves. So, what to do? Well, nothing in particular. <laughs> Everything in general is fine. Do what comes to you naturally, but keep your attention in the isness, and gradually you will come to a natural harmony, natural balance and synchronicity with the Self. You are going to not just learn, but also unlearn, and trust it. Trust what you are experiencing. Trust that there is a power, which I call grace, which is here to help you, to become more established in the truth that you are. The old mind, the dark side, wants you to be afraid. But if fear comes, remember, it is not for the what is. Do you see this? It is again for the person. It is as though 
the person appears out of the what is. It is the what is, but it has been severely limited because of the belief that it is merely the body, which is a time body. This is a time body. This is a mortal body. But the immortal is using it right now. He is living in here. Immortal means imperishable, deathless, unborn, uncreated. Two big words for you. So, this talk, along with most of the talks that happen in Mantisaja, are being recorded. And for those of you who feel some resonance with what you have experienced and heard, I will encourage you and advise you to keep watching this video. Just keep watching it. It is freely online. Just watch it until gradually you come to just know it. Why you must do this over and over? Because the mind is always active to try and distract your attention and to bring it into a state of idleness. Idleness means that you are simply giving attention to trivial things and to merely your body-mind existence, and not to your true Self. As you are discovering more and more the reality of your true heart, the mind will lose its influence and its power to create confusion in you. So, on your behalf, I'm going to say for you that if you are grasping what I am pointing to and standing with the, with the responses you gave to my questions, you are being liberated right now. And keep confirming. Just stay in the place of the isness. Is it difficult? No. Have I given you a hardship? No. no. Stay in the isness. The mind will go, What is this isness? What is this isness? What kind of business is the isness? And we are inclined to go, yeah. <laughs> we who? The old self image, the old idea we have of ourselves. We will keep on responding from there, but that will be changing. Because that's the old regime of identity. And like a reflex, your attention will keep going to the old reference place. But that old place is going to begin to smell for you. You are going to start to feel the limitation, like, oh, Whenever I slip back into the place of personhood, I feel all tight and troubled. And then I remember, but this tightness and trouble is not the isness. Ah, <laughs> so, for a time, if you genuinely uh, choose this, then you will experience this oscillation between going to the old state and again coming to the refreshing power of the 
the isness. The isness and the self and God is a harmony. Truth, God, isness, pure consciousness, awareness is one. It's one. Just differing names for the same truth. You are discovering your God Self. Meaning, don't say, Oh, I am God. No. But you are of God. We are in the house of God. You say, Yes, I don't believe in God. I only believe in awareness. That is God. (laughs) Who are you? Who say, I believe or I don't believe. Gone with the wind. Who are you who say that? An old mindset. Come to the isness. Let the isness be your reference point. Come to the isness. Look from the isness. You cannot look at the isness. You can only look from the isness. Because you are that isness. Our personal identity and all of its characteristics is the old dream. It's not up to date. It's mostly past. Habit, projection, fear, desire, attachments. Conditioning, none of which can apply to the isness. So, isn't it amazing? For many people, also today, you are here for first time, maybe to satsang, maybe first time, and yet, perhaps you are among those who grasp what is being pointed to. Without apparent background, why? Because it is totally natural for you. Does the isness hurt? Like now, you may say, but how can I keep the isness? You who? I am going to keep the infinite. Do you stand outside the infinite to be holding the infinite? So some ideas we have may continue for a while because we are still in some way feeling some awkwardness because why is it because of the naturalness of the isness no because of the old mindset, you are not sure, is it, am I the is or the is not? What, what am I? I? All these kind of things may happen for a while, but gradually the trouble will dissipate. Do you follow what is it? So what has happened today? is that we have started at the end. <laughs> Normally, we start and we move. Uh, 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 we are going somewhere, and then eventually we come to the end. And I put a hat on you and say, Hey, where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Okay? But today, we started at the end, which means if you start at the end, no? Then where can we go? (laughs) Now from here, we start to see the mind's questions. The mind is going to start saying, Yeah, okay, okay, Mr. What is? How about this? How do I, you know, how do I take care of my family as the what is? You see? What should I do? I said, sorry, who is speaking? Who is speaking? 
the what is? No, no, me, I am speaking. I am, and you are what? I, I, um, uh, I am myself. What do you mean? To take a look. It can seem really strange thing, because in one way, how can something be so profoundly simple that I didn't have to think about it? It's like I always knew this, but maybe I forgot that I know it. And while I forgot that I know what I cannot not be, I thought I remembered something that I'm not. I'm living as something that I really am not, which means your person, which is always changing. It says, yes, as from today, it's yes. Tomorrow, well, maybe. <laughs> and uh, very inconsistent. And you will begin to notice that. And notice that for so long in human years, we have lived with this very narrow way of looking. Why you are seeing it now? Why will you be able to see these things now, which you could not see before? Because of the discovery of the isness of being. It is not for later. It is always now. It is always here. If you say, I have trouble trying to concentrate, and you know, always my mind is giving me all this trouble, and I ask you now, can I say, can the, both the trouble and the one who is troubled are seen through the same lens? Is it true or not? Yes. So if not only the trouble is perceived, but the one who is troubled also, which normally you call yourself, is perceivable through the lens of perception, then who is behind the lens? Take a moment. Or are you in front of the lens of perception, and also behind the lens of perception. In front as name and form and time, and behind as the isness. Reflect. So I want to take just a few moments now in silence, just just allow some space for what has been heard. Don't be scratching your head about it. If your mind is saying, I don't get it. If your mind, the mind is saying, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. Don't give so much importance to that. It's not so much about getting something. When you look in the mirror, you don't get anything. It just reflects what is in front of it, truthfully. And this invitation is a kind of reflecting the true self. But it's a non-phenomenal reflection, meaning that it's not of an object. So it is beyond quality. How can such a thing be recognised? Just reflect.
just be. Without waiting, without expecting, the great Saint Francis of Assisi, he says, what you are looking for is already where you are looking from. What you are looking for is already where you are looking from. The great Rumi, he said, knocking at a door, it opens. I have been knocking from inside. Knocking at the door, it opens. I have been knocking from inside. You are inside as the Self, as the True, but you dream we are outside, knocking and asking, Please let me in. Knock, knock, knock. Please let me in. The door is open. You have been knocking from inside. This is the all of spirituality, the all of life. You have always been here, but you imagine you are somewhere else, lost, because we cling to the sense of personhood, which makes us feel separated from the Supreme, separated from the Supreme Being, separated from God, our own home. And because of this feeling of separateness and the suffering of isolation, the urge arises inside to look, and that is the knocking, because you feel lost, You feel you are outside, in the cold, and the door opens, is what? Grace. And the door has to open for you to recognise where you have always been. I have been knocking from inside. This is the great paradox of life. Even now, your mind does not want you to accept this. It tries to put in front of you the things to distract your attention, some old stupid thing that you feel a weakness for, to keep you waiting in the queue of misery. When you are already free, Sounds familiar? (coughs) 
And how amazing that on a day like today, so many people come and perhaps are discovering, making the greatest discovery in the human kingdom, as far as I am concerned. Because you can study this entire planet and all the universes. You may amass huge knowledge, encyclopedias of knowledge, and still be unfree. But you come here and sit down and are discovering the infinite self. You are going to kill death itself. And if your heart is humble and open, nothing will stop you. So again and again I remind you, just stay in the place of the isness. Reflect on it, ponder over it, meditate on it, acknowledge it, recognize it, love it, be it. It may seem an oversimplistic advice. Because I have not given you any gymnastics to perform, but to stay in the place of the true and observe hmm, the passing show of life. Be rich in contentment and peace. Flower in love and grace and understanding and peace and joy. This is your true inheritance. And today may be the most significant day of your life. Nothing is too bad, and it's not too late. So I don't know where you came from, but I know what brought you here. Rumi also said something beautiful. He say. Whoever brought me here must take me home. Mm. So, true to my word, I say to you, the stuff you have left outside, (laughs) you are free to reclaim. It will be there waiting for you, if you want it. If you don't want it, it will not be there. If you want it, 
it will be there. You choose. I hear a few people crying. I want you to know it is perfectly okay. It is just burping out also stale energies or the gratitude that arises from your heart in discovering the one thing worth discovering in your life. Think of it, you know, just for a moment to think, supposing it was that all that you had was this body and your mind only. And beyond this there was no other scope. All your all your successes and failure could only happen in the realm of body mind, which is true in fact. But there was nothing more than this. But you discover that there is more than this, infinitely more than this, and that all this is part of our dreaming experience, watched from the isness, from the ocean of pure awareness itself. Is it merely intellectual? Is it a fantasy for you? Then wake up. Wake up to that which never sleeps. Let the body sleep. Let mind sleep. Okay, now I don't have much more to say to you. I feel it is enough for for the moment. <clears throat> Take some space <clears throat> to swallow, digest, assimilate. All this is automatic also. Your place is only to keep choosing truth. Yes. Yes to the self. Yes to Awakening to what is true and stay in the place of the isness. And gradually you will feel the power of it, the power of it growing inside you, making your mind clear and peaceful, releasing your natural joy, your true life. Peace, grace, wisdom, love. (coughs) 
Thank you. Again, just checking in with you. This that you have discovered, this that is, can it go away? No. Until you began to discover it, where has it been? Where was it? Don't go back to sleep. <coughs> Understand how sleep happens in the human kingdom. This kind of sleep. I'm not talking about going to bed sleep. I'm talking about the sleep of ignorance, where we forget. We forgot the true and we remember the lie. Don't go back to sleep. Something wants us to sleep with your eyes wide open and your arms moving, but asleep to that which is real in yourself. And this one, he lives in every country, in everybody. Only you can make him redundant. But how? In fact, to a wise person, the mind is useful. Because this dark side of the mind cannot intimidate your true self. It can only intimidate the idea you are clinging to of yourself. So use him. When you feel too sensitive, or afraid, or judgmental, it is always when this guy hmm, succeeds in putting you in the position of a person. If you are too personal, and if you take the world personally, it will hurt. And the one who is hurt will hurt others also. Every problem conceived is personal. It has personhood underneath it. Look from the place of the the isness. It is impersonal, yet it is not without feeling. It is with true feeling. It is the the womb of love, and compassion, of joy, of silence, peace. These words will now be activated in you. Not the words, but what the words are a symbol for. They will not be mere words. They will become alive. They will become life. Trust this. Thank you. Do we have somebody coming to?
while they are preparing, I would like to read just a few verses from the Ashtavakra Gita. On the mind, it says, The mind desires this and grieves for that. It embraces one thing and spurns another. Now it feels anger, now happiness. In this way, you are bound. But when the mind desires nothing and grieves for nothing, when it is without joy or anger and grasping nothing, turns nothing away, then you are free. When the mind is attracted to anything it senses, you are bound. When there is no attraction, you are free. Where there is no I person, you are free. Where there is I, you are bound. Consider this. It is easy. Embrace nothing. Turn nothing away. Hare 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 Om Hare 
needs to just fully be seen Your heart is the light of this world It needs to just fully
Kamar. We'd like to uh, welcome everyone back. We're going to take a short break. And, and then there, there are chai, chai and, and refreshments for you down in the area that we call Little Jamaica. And then Muji Baba will come, come back and join, join us for um, a tea satsang, where he reads some letters that have been sent in to him. And we're all welcome to be in, uh, in satsang while Muji Ji reads the letters. So there'll be a short break, and then you'll hear the gong when it's time to come back in about 15, 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 